Greetings and welcome everyone to this news update. I am the Ninjaneer and we're going to go ahead and jump right into this. Uh, this is probably going to be a longer video today, so uh, grab a drink, grab a snack, something, uh, have a seat and uh, get comfortable. The topics for today are as follows. Rivian revealed some new vehicles, sort of. Uh, if Rumor deficiency of the R2, R3 and R3X. Many folks gave their impressions of these vehicles. How Aptera's February update was received. Aptera at a convention and what I noticed. My dear billionaire's response. Uh, I am not a billionaire, by the way. Dear politicians. Federal tax credit for Aptera. Aptera's BMS presentation. I didn't know this was a thing. Energy and Capital Aptera article, and things that I liked. Let's get started. Rivian revealed its R2 and R3, as well as R3X vehicles that are supposed to be released later on. Based on all of the people that I have heard talk about these vehicles, the reception is very positive, and folks tend to love the designs of all the vehicles they showed, but everyone seems specifically interested in and curious about the R3 and R3X. Part of that deep intrigue may be that the vehicles were not even suspected, and another part of it is probably the fact that small efficient EVs hold a soft spot in the heart of anyone who cares about EVs because they are often considered the future and a sustainable way forward. Another thing that may have contributed to this was that it was pretty good looking in my personal opinion. Now if I may get a little controversial, I don't think that besides the size anything is really different about the vehicles presented. That doesn't mean that I'm discounting or disparaging the engineering it took to make the platform smaller or how the folks deciding on the packaging of the vehicle made just the right trade-offs or so it appears at this time. I'm saying that those who like the Rivian for its design, myself included, still like the design and those that do not probably were not swayed very much. Overall, the presentation and the products were both promising and I look forward to seeing the R3 on the road someday. Even though I liked the presentation, I have to acknowledge that it did less than I would have liked for investors' confidence in the company, uh, barely moving the needle when you look at the, uh, the effect on stock price and things like that. Telosive EV did a video that talked about the theoretical efficiency of the new Rivian vehicles based on a set of numbers estimated by a better trip planner, um, which is the name of the company now that I'm saying that it makes it, it, it sounds confusing when I put it like, okay, there's a company called, uh, th there's a company that put out a product called a better trip planner. These folks have estimated the numbers that uh, should be uh, expected when tripping, uh, road tripping with the Rivian R2 and R3. Um, so yeah, uh, if these numbers are accurate, and I hope they prove to be accurate, they have done some wizardry under the hood or perhaps under the chassis to improve efficiency. I've always considered the Rivian to be the epitome of a brick on wheels, honestly, but if the numbers are true and um, pro are proven to be, you know, real world, it would be a round brick with an extremely efficient powertrain, which, I mean, I mean, it's nothing to scoff at. It's uh, knocking on the efficiency of Model 3 and things like that with the R2 and R3. So that could be very interesting. As an aside to the Rivian presentation, a lot of people reviewed the revealed vehicles Ooh, I did that to myself. You, you hear that this crazy scripting with uh, our words in secession, uh, alliteration, if you will. Anyway, um, as an aside to the Rivian presentation, a lot of people reviewed the revealed vehicles after the fact and put out videos. The two I linked above are essentially the best I found, but there were many others. In general, all of the folks that gave their impressions talked about how well the vehicles seat people and the quality of materials used in the cabin. Aptera's February update got a lot of feedback, and generally speaking, that feedback was positive. I felt the need to push back on a couple of the things that people had critiques of with respect to the presentation that were not really as bad as they seemed. 
There was a sentiment, at least on the forums that I frequent, that seemed to indicate that not giving a precise date to production was a negative for Aptera because it was not clear enough. This sentiment was echoed by those who said the exact opposite when Aptera said a date, but I digress. The reason why them giving a timeline like getting money plus X number of months is better than saying 2024, for instance, is it is more accurate and less confusing. Saying something like this vehicle will release in a year, uh, sorry, this vehicle will release this year, or yeah, even this vehicle is releasing in a year for several years in a row, does a lot more to eat away at people's patience than just saying, when we get the money, we can spin up an X number of months. The former is overly optimistic in my opinion, and the latter is as realistic as it gets with respect to maintaining excitement for the vehicle. The PI builds not being in the US was also frowned upon for reasons I didn't agree with, but don't get me wrong, not having a timeline for these bodies arriving in the US, on top of confirmation that they are still in Italy, was a bit of a gut punch, but from what I am hearing, the reasons why these bodies are not here makes perfect sense. I don't quite know the source for this information, but a few original bodies, according to this source, were not quite up to snuff, so they scrapped them and pressed them again. This dedication to safety and persistent excellence is part of the reason I put so much effort into my coverage of them. Well, they were obviously satisfied with the new presses, uh, if this story, uh, sorry, if this source is to be believed, so they showed them off at JEC World. JEC uh, World is basically the leading international composite show, as you can see right here. Um, the website itself had uh, several different pieces of the puzzle that kind of um, filled in what exactly they do, but basically they are uh, a technology, uh, they put a spotlight on technologies that are progressive and uh, uh, new and cool in the composites sector, and it doesn't get any more new or cool, in my opinion, than the Aptera. So yeah, the article here basically gives the details of the event. The event was a few days ago, so it has already passed, but um, <clears throat> the coverage of this event was fantastic and uh, basically kind of uh, expansive with respect to Aptera specifically. Uh, there were a few different channels that I will link their videos uh, in the description who did fantastic coverage. Uh, Aptera Owners Club even picked up some of the footage from some of the folks that were recording over there um, in, uh, in France for this event. Uh, there were people that got fantastic views of the inside of the bink and uh, different aspects of the sides and the outsides and the layers and uh, they had a fantastic exploded view of this particular body and carbon uh, at the event. <clears throat> yeah, like I said, I cannot emphasize enough how amazing those videos are, so go ahead and check those out in the description below. Uh, a lot of great insights, a lot of cool things that um, uh, are happening with the body structure. Um, yeah, so yeah, check those guys out. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, on a side note, uh, Chris did um, a fantastic job of fielding questions. Um, actually, both representatives did a fantastic job of, uh, of presenting their the, the information about Aptera. Uh, they had great answers to all the questions that were asked. Um, I was very impressed by um, by how well they fielded those questions, but of course that is their job. So um, them knowing their job well, again, another reason why I love Aptera. Talking about uh, talking a lot about Talos of EV today, but essentially they put a uh, uh, Talos of EV put out a video that kind of detailed the case for why somebody should invest that fifty million dollars into Aptera. Um, I absolutely love that video and um, in general it kind of will be a template for uh, how I present this to people that I know that actually have money. Um, <laughs> those people aren't many but um, there, there are enough that I believe I can help make some kind of difference in the fundraising for Aptera. Um, at any rate, that video was so well encapsulated that I uh, started thinking to myself because, well, in general I have 
uh, three passions in life, um, engineering, politics, and electric vehicles apparently. But uh, yeah, it made me think about how a politician's mind would approach the concept of uh, Aptera as an idea and um, what have you. Talos's video kind of inspired me to make a version of that video for myself uh, called Dear Politicians. Um, basically that video is going to come out hopefully sometime later this week, probably the end of the week. Um, but yeah, um, I believe that there's a lot of parties that if they assisted Aptera would be uh, beneficial to making them get to market way faster than what would happen uh, under their own power or under the power of the investors that are so dedicated to the Aptera cause. Um, so yeah, look forward to that. That's going to be a later video. Uh, hopefully I'm going to be posting three videos this week. We'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, kind of me not, uh, not paying attention in a way. Uh, so, on the YouTube website, uh, when you're in the little creators section of the website, uh, it gives you the option to uh, decide to accept money from YouTube. And I'm like, yes, of course I want to do that. Uh, back on my previous channel when I did that, everything was more or less automatic and there weren't very many extra features to think about. And so this time around, I also kind of just clicked through everything like, oh, okay, I already have my information set up. I already have my payment method set up. I already have, a, yeah, just, I clicked through it. Um, a couple of days ago, I got a, um, a super chat, my first super chat. And I said to myself, self, what the heck just happened? Because I was under the impression that Super Chats were just a uh, somebody who comments a lot just saying something else in the chat during like a live stream or something. I, I didn't have a reference point for Super Chats. And so uh, Drive the Lightning, holding it down, um, they basically uh, gave me my first Super Chat. I am super honored and pleased and thankful for uh, that because uh, now I actually know they exist and I can ask of anybody else that wants to give me a super chat to please do so. Um, that would be fantastic for um, improving the channel, getting me uh, more opportunities to go and talk to Aptera and things like that. Um, yeah, everything that I get on this channel is going to go back into this channel. So um, yeah. Good times there. Uh, I also, after looking back into it, I was, uh, I found out that there were other things that I could do. Uh, I could set up memberships and things like that. Um, so long story short, I'm looking into what options I want to put into those sorts of programs so that, uh, uh, so that you guys have value added to the channel and I can uh, make a little bit of extra to help with my editing and, and get to places for Aptera events uh like i really wanted to go to france but uh I, I ain't got money like that so um yeah just keep in mind that sooner or later i'm going to introduce those types of things to the channel in an effort to uh get to more aptera events and uh do more aptera related stuff with aptera specifically as opposed to news videos and things like that not that i'm not going to do those it's just i'll be able to do more than what i am now Alrighty, energy and capital. Uh, Aptera was analyzed, I guess, by energy and capital. I'm gonna link the video, oh, sorry, I'm gonna link the article below and uh, we got a, the article right here in front of you. So here we are. Um, basically, they talked about the pros and cons and um, whatnot of the Aptera. Uh, you can see some of the topics here, uh, sustainability and efficient uh, efficiency is Aptera's mission. Um, investing in Aptera stock, basically a chance to be part of the future and all sorts of fun stuff there. So uh, why, it mat uh, why investors should consider it. And like, it's a very good article, a very detailed article and one that I would suggest for anybody who uh, was thinking about investing in Aptera. Um, talk to your financial advisor, look through this article, present this article to them, let them know, hey, this is a thing and uh, yeah, good times. 
Last thing for today, uh, things that I liked. Tesla did, uh, sorry, Tesla Cybertruck wind testing. There's a video that was done uh, by a newly found, well, a channel that I've just recently found uh, where they actually took a Cybertruck into a wind tunnel and tested it. And I saw a lot of parallels between um, between the Cybertruck and the Aptera, funny enough, um, just based on uh, how the wind moves around it. So it just kind of shows how an aerodynamic shape is really important for uh, efficiency and how an aerodynamic shape doesn't necessarily have to be um, very small or, or super slick or anything like that, but it definitely helps. Um, yeah, man, that'll be about it for this video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I am the Ninjaneer. If you'd like to like and or subscribe or do the other YouTube things, please do those things and I will catch you guys next time.